Welcome to Father and Son. Welcome to you, Tom. Morning, Dad. How are you? Well, well gee, if you missed a rabbit, you've got to be feeling fantastic, don't you? I mean, this saga is just unbelievable. There she was. She was going to call a press conference this morning to announce that maybe she was going to drop um, Rudd, maybe have a leadership spill next week. He got the message on it, and there he was in Washington. He preempted it. I thought it was brilliant what he did. And you read what he said, he's, he's made himself look like the innocent party totally. Didn't get support from the Prime Minister. She didn't defend him against all these people speaking out against him. So he put himself in the best position he could. And, and I think, I'll just finish, I think what he'd be doing over the weekend is saying, look, if you don't vote for me, there's every chance that I'm going to resign from the federal parliament. I will cause a by-election and that will, and, and you'll lose that because the people in my election love me, so whoever you put in won't win the seat and that'll put you out of game. Well, it's an interesting time because I mean, another, another idea or another alternative is that, um, of course, if Rudd wins this leadership bill, and, and actually we don't know if they'll have a formal leadership bill, I mean, Rudd will only Throw it's his hat been announced in the ring. this morning. Oh, well, they're going to have it, but I'm pointing to Rubble only throws hat in the ring, I think, if he, if he thinks he's got the numbers, obviously. No, no, no. The, the argument is that if he gets 30 or more, he'll, 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 he'll stand. He'll just to see what happens. No, because that that's what happened with Keating. You see, Keating didn't win the first time against Hawk. And he goes back to the back bench and he continues to undermine. Them. No, I know that. But, but if last he doesn't week, get 30. Oh. I think what he'll do is resign. I know, but last week I was telling you, you said the opposite. You said you'd only do all this if you got the numbers. Well, anyway, I think that's right. Now, but, it's, uh, now it's been forced. Anyway, it's out in the open, but the, the point is this there, there's several alternatives, and it's worth looking at what they are. Um, the Labor Party has its spill on Monday. Uh, Rubble have only been back in the country for, I think, 24 hours by the time it occurs, so obviously he'll be working the phones a lot, probably on the aeroplane. Well, I think they're doing that. He's, you know, each yeah. year I've got a team of. But the, the, th the thing yeah. is this, the, the key is, 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 as it has been for the past year or so, the independence. For instance, Rob Oakeshott had said his deal is only with Julia Gillard. The last couple of days he's slightly backtracked on that. Tony Windsor has said that he probably wouldn't do a deal with Rudd, that he, he has thought that an election would be the only appropriate thing. And Andrew Wilkie, uh, having been essentially shafted by Julia Gillard, he's the, the Tasmanian yes. anti-pokey MP, he said, well, he's been speaking to Kevin Rudd about this already, which suggests that Rudd, to buy his support, might say, well, I'll, I'll push ahead with these pokey reforms. So it's a very interesting situation. I mean, I mean, the problem for Labor members, the rank and file of the caucus members, is that if they support Rudd, but that means they lose government because like, they lose a couple of the independents, they go to an early election, they lose it, well, Rudd's the leader, but he's the leader of the opposition. The alternative, is, the alternative is you stick with Gillard and say, well, maybe we'll lose anyway, but we've at least got two years to, to change things and two years where our popularity might turn around. So a very, very interesting time. No win situation for both of them. No, I don't think either of them can win a federal election. I think Rudd will get a, a higher percentage of the vote than Gillard. Gillard's really on the nose out there in the electorate. And um, you know, I think there's every chance now of an early election, because of some of the reasons you've just said, and particularly if Rudd doesn't get many numbers, then he will resign from the parliament. Which creates its own problem, because you're quite yeah. right, he's popular in Queensland, he'll be seen to be the innocent party, they'll vote against whoever the Labor Party picks up. Um, what about from a broader perspective, Dad? I mean, you know, the world is not without its challenges at the moment. I mean, um, we haven't no. mentioned Greece yet, but a, a Greek bailout deal has been done. That's yeah. obviously a positive. And if it hadn't been done, the, the negative would have been considerable. But the fact is, you know, Australia's in a very fortunate position, not much debt, um, excellent trade figures and so forth. But the point is, the world is, is a difficult place. And, and here we are, obsessed with these sort of internal squabbles in the Labor Party. Well, the, I mean, the rest of the world must be looking on thinking these people are a joke. Well, you know, it really, to me, seems like rearranging deck chairs on the Titanic. Australia's not the Titanic, that's too strong a metaphor. But really, do they ever stand back and look at themselves and say, you know what, what, what we are you obviously being don't stupid understand here. politics. Well, I, I do, I'm just... It's all, they're all about themselves. Most of them that go into Parliament and think they'll make Prime Minister. And it's all about getting the numbers and getting a promotion, particularly the Labor Party, because people who go into Parliament on the Labor side get a big lift in pay yes. and get a big lift in importance. And if they become ministers, they have drivers and things, they, they have a way of life they would never they have. They would never otherwise have. Whereas on the Liberal side, there's a lot of people that 
only go into politics as a bit of a sacrifice because they're earning more money outside. But it just it just is disappointing because there is so many. It's other normal. It's been oh, I know it's normal. Forever, but, all right through my life. I don't know why you're so surprised. Well, I can tell you, but the other thing is like you know, up until recently, you know, the Liberal Party, like people were saying, saying, what are Tony Evans policies? Joe Hoggy, what would you do to reduce the deficit? There was a bit of you know a few journalists starting to say, well, let's look at the other side because they might be or probably will be the next government. Now, I mean, you know, you're quite right. Tony Abbott just sits back and says, well, we'll just stay quiet, and that's a matter for the Labor Party. And I'm, and I'm the last thing Tony attention. Abbott needs to do is bring out any policies, because mm. that's, that's when you make a mistake. Jim Carlton did it when we were in opposition with his shadow treasurer. He made a mistake of a billion in the budget, in his budget. That, you know, we became laughing stock. So you've got to be very careful when you're putting out policies, because in opposition, you don't have the same access to the treasury and things mm. to get to numbers right. Abbott... He's just got to sit there, and I must be laughing all the way to the back. You know, we're, we're going to win the next election. You know, there's an old saying that um, people get the politicians they deserve. If that's the case, uh, all of us uh, have obviously done something very bad in a previous life. <laughs> These are the politicians we deserve. They are a terrible lot. I mean, Dad, you're obviously older than me. I mean, is this just about the worst lot you've ever seen, or is it well, pretty liked, much part uh, of the course? Well, I the guy who writes in the Herald Sun, the finance writer. Terry McCran. Terry McCran. He said today, this is a fight between the worst Prime Minister in the history of Australia and the second worst. <laughs> I don't know what he actually said in, in the body of the article which was worst and which was second. It's both been terrible. Yeah. Terrible. But we did have Whitlam. I think he was pretty ordinary way back when. Yeah, anyway, let's, let's, let's sort of shift now from this. This will be all on. Next week we'll be able to tell you the outcome and what it means, whether the, there's every chance the fight will go on if he gets an update. Yes. Otherwise he'll yeah. leave, and that'll put more difficult, different pressures on the yes. Labor government. Uh, Greece, okay, they've signed up a deal. They're going to be supervised. Now, well, I understand. Not only supervised, I mean, the money has to go into a separate account that effectively the Greek government can't touch. And, and that debt is superior to every other debt. So if, if Greece goes and borrows more money, it sits below that debt. So look, the, the Greek people have realised they're in for a decade or two, you know, maybe more, of, of complete austerity. You know, youth unemployment increase debt is around 25%. I Why mean, would you stay there? I, 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 uh, I, you know, I think they'd be better to go back to have the drag moment. Well, a lot of them are saying... A lot of them apparently try to come here now. So, you know, these are their Greek relatives in we, Melbourne. We've had all the Greeks that wanted to work. They came out after the war. Only the ones that didn't want to work stayed yeah. home. Apologies to our Greek viewers, but uh, it's probably true. Um, well, look, anyway, Greece is a basket case, but at least it's dealt with. They probably won't fulfil it. Dealt with in the short term. In the short term. And my question is, why would they be holding an election two months uh, in two months' time? I because can't understand mad. this. Because they are mad. Because... Look, they, they, they regard themselves as the birthplace of, you know, Athenian democracy going back to the classical era. And I think at the moment they are, they are led by a, a non-democratically elected government. It's not elected they at all. Were, they were put in to get... I, I know, but, but they're saying that the internal tensions in Greece... Apparently in Athens now, you know, smashed streetlights aren't being repaired, burnt out shops are being left burned out. You know, the place is, is, is rapidly turning into a third world country. And that's very sad. Very it, sad. It shouldn't be like that. Uh, I agree. So I don't think it's over forever, this problem? No, it's not. But, but you know, the, the financial least... markets are often just a series of short-term solutions to things. I mean, nothing's ever over. You just live to fight another day, and that's yeah. perhaps all you can hope for sometimes. Well, footy started. Carlton, I'm having lunch with Kernahan today, so I'll know a bit more um, about the Blues. But they had the biggest family day ever. The biggest crowd Kernahan told me on the phone. There was 8,000 8, people. There were 10. 10. And... That's as big a crowd as they've had since we won the flag in 87. The next day, it's been about that many turning up. So it was a great effort. Cricket's still going on. Ponting's gone. Very interesting. And uh, I think it's probably the right thing to do. I looked at his batting average in the one-day internationals. I worked it out. It was about 4.7 runs per innings. This year, it's 3.6. There you go. It's not very but good. But his, his average over his career is over 50. Oh, no. Cricket. But you're only as good as your recent few games, I agree. surely. No, I think... You know, I think the selectors are making a point too. Those that are in form get, 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 a, go. get a go, and those that go out of form get dropped. And that's the way it should be. Yeah, all right, well, uh, well, we'll continue next week. We'll know a little bit more about what's happening in our wonderful Labor Party. We may well have a new Prime Minister. I don't think it'll, I don't think we will. See you next week. <laughs>